Um, good morning. It is 4.42 a.m. Um, and <laughs> I'm tired, but I'm about to go have surgery to find out if I have endometriosis and to remove any of it if it's there any of the implants. Um, I wrote a whole blog post about my experience so far. Um, so that should be up if it's, that should be up. I'll link it in the description box below. Um, so you can kind of check out the backstory if you would like. So I'm heading to go have that surgery now. Um, and that is stressful and <laughs> weird and scary, but, you know, any type of surgery is scary, and, you know, a diagnosis of endometriosis is not ideal, but it's, you know, an answer, um, kind of an explanation for what I've been dealing with for years, and so, I really just want an answer, you know, and like a course of action to follow to kind of deal with it as best we can. Um, I just kind of, I don't know. I know I don't have a lot of followers, but so maybe it's kind of silly of me to be posting this stuff, but I feel like even, I don't know, you just don't know who's following you, and so even if one person needs to hear what you have to say about this if one person maybe has endometriosis is dealing with these symptoms or is dealing with something similar maybe it's not even endometriosis but they you know read what I have to say or see this and I talk about the pain and how it's not normal and maybe they see that and say well She's right, it's not normal. Maybe I need to go get checked out and so maybe they get they find out something that can help them. You know, who knows? Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe nobody following me needs to see it, but just in case. I guess I'll put it out there. I can't wear any makeup today, so that's why I look the way that I do. My roomie slash cousin slash BFF was kind enough to French braid my hair so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Um so he told me to wear something loose-fitting and comfortable, so I'm wearing my oldest pair of sweatpants and some flippers and my Dean Ambrose hoodie because it's kind of like a security blanket. That was my first piece of merchandise. No, it was my first piece of Dean Ambrose merchandise. My sister bought it for me years a few years ago, and um, it's probably still my favorite piece of merchandise. But anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go have surgery today. That's so weird. Um, I don't have a lot of, like, medical things that I deal with, so... I'm kind of ter- I'm terrified of needles, really, and... I don't like being touched a lot by people that I don't really know. Um, and, you know, it's like prodded and asked a million questions and but you know if I can get answers it'll all be worth it I guess if I can I'll you know record some I don't know it may be crazy and we'll see but um my mom's gonna come and pick me up and um we're gonna go get investigated today I can't even wear deodorant or moisturizer or lotion or anything like that. Um, but I followed all the directions to a T because I don't want to get there and then tell me that they can't see me because they said that that has happened before. So I followed all the rules. I didn't eat or drink anything after midnight when I brushed my teeth. I was very careful not to drink water, like to swallow any water because the surgical paper that they gave me said not to do that, so. Anyway, um, 
like I said, we'll do updates if I can. Um, and I'll put information about, like, the blog post that's got, like, the backstory of everything in the description box below. So you can check that out if you want more information about endometriosis or you kind of just want to see, like, what my experience is or you're just curious. Um, so, but if you are a woman, I, or a female, I encourage you to check it out, um, just in case. No, I have nothing. I'll be right, I'm going to stand right there. Okay. Because <laughs> mom, we're in the hospital room. She doesn't have service, and I guess she's checking to see where she does, just to keep family updated and whatnot. I am in this really sweet hospital gown. Um, I have nothing. <laughs> I, it's, I'm sorry. I have extended 3D. 3G. 3D. Um, this is a very thick hospital gown with lots of padding and openings for God knows what. Um, but I appreciate that it's more secure than most hospital gowns and I don't feel as exposed. Right? You can't really tell what my body looks like in this no. thing. <laughs> so, how are you feeling today, Mom? Worried. Yeah? I'm sure it'll be alright, though. But I'm ready for my role as helicopter mom. <laughs> I've been thinking about movies we should watch while I'm down. Okay. And my comfort movies are Tropic Thunder. Okay. Which is hilarious. You it need is. to give it a chance. Okay. That Dean Ambrose movie, Lockdown. Never seen it. It's pretty amazing. And Steel Magnolias. Oh, you're going to make me cry. It makes me cry every time. But it's a good one. It is, but Those... I may need a good cry. So, okay, we'll steal it. Every time she has that freak out at the funeral, every time, that's what gets me. I make it the whole movie, and then she has that freak out at the funeral, and I just... Mm -hmm. It's done so. So anyway, my aunt is on the way back, allegedly. Um, I hope they let her back. Um... So we're just hanging out, waiting for me to get hooked up to things, which is very stressful. I don't like needles. And, um, yeah. Updates when I can. So, one of my aunts brought me these pretty flowers. These ones look like they have confetti. And a card and some ice cream for my throat. And then my other aunt brought me a super cute balloon. And this little soft kitty. And some little Swedish fish because I love Swedish fish. So that was very nice of them. We didn't have like an available vase so it's just in like a pitcher but they're very pretty. Hi there. Um, so it's him. I haven't really, well, I haven't recorded since before surgery. Um, last time you guys saw me, I was getting ready. Um, I was in the hospital. It is Monday. My surgery was on Thursday. So I took a whole bunch of days to just kind of, you know, relax and um, heal and sleep. And I was on pain meds, so I was kind of like a space cadet. And, um, did a lot of sleeping and falling asleep, <laughs> um, but I switched, I was on oxycodone, and so I switched to the ibuprofen today, and so I'm more clear-headed, um, but anyway, so, um, after I talked with you, um, I waited around for a little while, visited with my family and stuff who were there, and, um, then they came in and started doing, like, the IVs, that was horrible. I do not like needles and I'm a bit of a difficult stick, I guess. So they tried on one hand, then they tried on this hand. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this hand is kind of bruised. If you can see a little bit. I accidentally hit the stop button. Anyway, so then um, the nurse was digging around or whatever trying to find a vein and my mom was starting to get angry but it was just for me it was just like super horrible and painful and 
anyway, um, but I know they have to find a baby, they have to get the IV again, so, um, but she stopped after two, she said she doesn't do any more after two, and then the anesthesiologist was able to get me on the first try, um, like in the bend of my arm, so, thank goodness for that, um, so, you know, they got the IV in, kind of made me put on that hairnet, um, this kind of prepared me some. The, a whole bunch of people came into the room at once. It, like, it was kind of overwhelming. But, you know, the anesthesiologist and the anesthesiology nurse. And then the my doctor came in. And the OR nurse came in. And then somebody who was helping the, my doctor. And just a whole bunch of people at once. Um, but, you know, they introduced themselves to me and stuff. So that I would know who was working on me, I guess, and whatnot. And asked me questions. And um, then they rolled me back. And I started to freak out, um, like, not like, make a scene freak out, just like, internally freaking out. Um, the room was gigantic, and, um, anyway, they gave me some stuff to calm me down, like some anti-anxiety stuff, and the first set they didn't, they gave me didn't work, like, I was still, like, stressed and whatever, but they gave me some more, and that calmed me down, and that's all I remember till I woke up in recovery, very, very confused, um, so, yeah, I was, the anesthesia was really, like, I don't know, it was just super heavy and, like, it took me a while to come out of it and, like, the, I don't know, it was just a, it was a crazy feeling, like, I just felt so heavy and, like, I don't know how to explain it, but, um, so came home and rested and stuff, so while I was in recovery, the doctor came out and talked to my mom and said that I do have endometriosis. They cauterized what they could while they were in there. Um, so that's, you know, taken care of for right now. But, um, you know, it comes back. The doctor said that if I wanted to have um, a kid at all, if I wanted to get pregnant, then I needed to start right away. But I don't want to have kids, so that's not really an issue for me. Um, but, you know, it is does kind of have an effect on fertility so if you you know are somebody who wants to have a kid and you have endometriosis that can be a problem um just in my case i don't i don't want to have kids so it's not an issue for me um so i just um after that i woke up and was very very confused in recovery and the man in the bed next to me was they were talking about how he had been throwing up onions and then he said what are you talking about i don't even like onions so somebody was <laughs> At least I wasn't throwing up onions, I guess. Um, but I, my arm, my shoulder has been really, really sore. Both of my shoulders were sore to begin with, and the doctor said to expect that. Um, but this one in particular, like, is feeling all right today. But for the for like until today, it, it's been really, really painful. I've been sleeping with the heating pad and using those pain patches and stuff, and I haven't really felt the pain from the actual surgery. Um, too much just because I was on the oxycodone. Um, so I can feel it a little bit more today just because I switched the ibuprofen, so I may have to switch back. Um, but so far it's not too bad, so, um, anyway. Um, so, I've just kind of been processing the fact that I do have endometriosis and it's, you know, something that's gonna affect me until I go into menopause and it's something I'm just gonna have to deal with and um, while I was in after I was out of recovery and they took me to another room and my mom came to see me um, they helped me get dressed which is very strange having somebody else help you get dressed I was so completely like out of it that I, I needed the help to get dressed but anyway and the doctor came and talked to me and said that we would you know, have our post-op appointment or whatever, and we'll discuss where to go from here, but I am going to have to switch to some kind of injection birth control, probably. Um, every three months I'll need an injection, which really, really sucks. Um, but, you know, you have to do what you have to do. It could give me some early menopause symptoms, so that's, um, you know, not what you want, but I have to, like I said, I have to do what I have to do. Um, like I said, I've just been relaxing and sleeping a lot and taking my meds and 
I slept most of Thursday and a lot of a fair amount of Friday too. Um, I started to get more active over the weekend. Saturday when we went, I went on a little Walmart trip with the roomies. Very short. Um, and yesterday we went out to dinner. Also very short. Um, but you know, trying to just be a little more active around the house and a little more awake and me. Today's the first day I've worn makeup. Um, since before the surgery. Um, still no contact, so just haven't felt like it. Um, but anyway, so that's been my sort of situation. I'm, I've written, I've been written out of work for this whole week. Um, so it just kind of depends on how I feel and stuff. When I do go back, like I can go back earlier if I want to, but we'll see. Um, but it's only Monday, so, um, Anyway, um, if, you know, I may do some more updates before the recovery time is up, you know, I would like to keep, you know, documenting stuff as it does relate to endometriosis, just, just, just in case it is helpful to somebody, you know, um, just in case there's one person that watches or reads what I have and they say, oh, you know, that's similar to what I'm experiencing and they go get checked out or, you know, just anything, you know, but hopefully it's helpful or useful to somebody. Um, so I think that's it as of right now. Just gonna relax and spend some time at home and like I said, I'm still kind of processing everything and, you know, it's, it's a big thing to be diagnosed with and to kind of accept and, you know, now is moving forward and figuring out the next steps and what I can do to make things better or whatever it is to handle things and manage the pain and whatever else so anyway thanks for you know keeping up with what I've been doing and if I have any more updates I will I will update you Tesla's been keeping me company cause she's a good pup yes you are and keep me company all this time. Hey there! So it's still Monday, the 12th of June. So I realized I didn't really explain so much the surgery, I don't think. So basically, what happened, it was a diagnostic laparoscopy um, to go in and check to see if I had endometriosis and then to take care of if, um, to take care of whatever. Um, endometriosis implants were there if they were there <coughs> so first they went in through my belly button and looked around to see if there was endometriosis and there was so then they made an incision like on the side of my stomach well of not my organ stomach but you know my belly they made a an incision on the side and went in and cauterized the endometriosis implants that were there. Um, so hopefully this will give me some relief for a little while. Um, so I have an incision in my belly button. I can't really, I mean, I don't know how graphic it is. I haven't really wanted to move things around too much to look. Um, and then there's a incision on the side of my belly. It's maybe like this long. I think it will probably scar. I'm not sure, but they're just closed up with this, like, um, not like stitches. They're just like closed up with this almost like clear stuff like almost like glue but it's not glue um so and that I guess kind of just like dissolves when it's done um but the one on the incision on the side is starting to peel up on the side a little bit and I don't know if that's normal if that's what it's supposed to be doing um but I'm just not messing with it um because I don't want to mess anything up open <laughs> open up a big old hole in the side of me or anything like that so um I'm just gonna leave it be I guess if it comes off, then maybe it's okay. We'll see. But, um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, they just told me that those would kind of, like, come off and whatever on their own. Um, so I guess it's been about five, four or five days, so maybe it is time. I don't know. But anyway, that's, um, what the surgery was all about. So, just if you had any questions about that what the process was and like obviously it's not very medical or anything but you know just the 
layman's version um, of what the process was like and so I do feel some of the pain in my stomach today just because like I said I switched off of the um, oxycodone onto the 800 milligram ibuprofen um, and it has been hurting some so I may go back on the other meds I may not we'll see it's kind of up to my discretion I don't want to be t having to take like serious painkillers if I don't have to so um, anyway that's the surgery if anybody was interested in that part, if you wanted to know. Sorry if you didn't want to know. Thank you. Look at these cute little little pups. My friends. Hi there! It is Tuesday. Um, Sam's recovery adventure continues. Um, I'm not on any pain meds today, so we'll see. Hopefully that can last um, throughout the day. We'll see. Um, yesterday I did end up taking an oxycodone in the evening after I made dinner. Um, so, and I had also driven around the corner to the food lion near my house, um, with one of my roommates before I took the painkiller. Um, so that was nice. Um, little adventure. Um, and I drove, so, you know. Um, my, the incision on the side of me, the... The stuff is really, really, like, it's really, really itchy and it's driving me crazy. Um, and yesterday evening I was just sitting here hanging out and scratched it without thinking and, um, pulled up some more of that, like, glue adhesion stuff or whatever it is. Um, so I was like, oh no! Um, so yeah, it's just super itchy. I try to wear regular jeans today. I have been wearing stretchy pants except past couple of days I've been wearing these little denim shorts that I have that are really like loose and it didn't bother the incision on the either one it didn't bother either my incisions um so today I was like I'm gonna try to wear some regular jeans like you know just to be more you know normal um and I had them on for a few hours and they um were kind of just like agitating the itchiness of this one and like the stuff was kind of like, it was like picking at the stuff, kind of, and um, also kind of like pushing in and hurting just a little bit, so I ended up taking them off, putting on some starchy pants, but, you know, I gave it a go. So I've just been doing some things around the house, um, you know, paying some bills that I had lying around that I forgot to pay, and uh, I know that I'm about to have, you know, some more medical bills coming in, so I thought it would be a good idea to just make sure I'm caught up on everything else. Um, doing some laundry, just some random stuff around the house, random computer stuff, and, um, my Ipsy bag was supposed to come today. It had set in the tracking for, like, days that it was coming today, the 13th, and then I looked this morning, and it's supposed to come on the 15th now. Like, I don't know what happened. Um, there was nothing in the tracking to indicate. Anyway, it's not that big of a deal, but, you know, I was looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, so. Um, anyway... Um, so yeah, just doing some house stuff. I'm about to watch another episode of this sh Sorry about that. My memory was full because I've been recording this whole time, you know, that I've been, my whole surgery experience. So, um, I've been watching this show, The Keepers. I started yesterday this documentary. It's a crime series documentary. It's super interesting on Netflix, so I do recommend it if, um, you're into that kind of thing. Um, it's also really, really sad, so just keep that in mind as well. Um... Oh yeah, and today I did also, um, I contacted my doctor's office, my gynecologist's office, um, to check because, so when I had the doctor's appointment where we initially said I was going to have the surgery and we set the surgery, we also set a post-op appointment. She told me to set it for four weeks out from the surgery. So that's what we did. And then in my discharge paperwork from the surgery, it says to set an appointment, a post-op appointment from, from one to two weeks after the surgery. So I wasn't sure if that changed things or whatever. So I called and asked about that. And um, they said that they would have um, my doctor's nurse give me a call back. They were going to give the message or pass it along or whatever. So we'll see. Um, and I actually, I am still experiencing some of the pain that I described having um, before you know, the pain associated with endometriosis, so I don't know if it's just because I'm still healing inside as well, so that's still having an effect or what, um, 
you know, because they did go in and like cauterize things and whatever, so I may still be healing on the inside and it might just be sensitive and, um, so that might just be, that's what I'm hoping it is. I would love to actually feel some relief from the surgery. Um, but anyway, I, that's definitely something I'll talk about in the post-op, um, appointment whenever that may be. Um, and I guess kind of keep people posted, you know, so those who are interested can look and see kind of the the, you know, what I'm doing and how things are going with, um, with that whole aspect of things, the actual endometriosis and, you know, what effect maybe the surgery had or didn't have and, um, the medicine, the effect that, that, you know, the change in medicine, how that's going to affect and just so, you know, people who are interested, you know, can see that perspective as well. Um, but I'm going to watch another episode of this, um, show. Um, so yeah, maybe check in later. Thanks. Thanks. These sweet little pups. Spending all this time with me. It's like a puzzle trying to put this thing together. Thanks for hanging out with me. You know, you heard some pretty wild stories. You guys are pretty chill. I like your vibe. For the most part. So we're playing this, like, party game thing. There's only three of us. Don't forget to use all two. But. It's like Jack Box TV. Anyway. Okay, let's see what you pick. Yes. Let's see. I picked on the what? Oh god. I killed it. I'm jinkies. Look a second. Barely. The person freaking out is the person who won. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Anyway. Time to turn to the Easter candy <laughs> to comfort himself. He just did me a favor by throwing Milky Ways at me. That's not a problem. It's the opposite of a problem. <laughs> Some people work really hard to have Milky Ways thrown at them. 